Right now at noon, Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. just wrapped up an address of the recent jump in violent crime, his plan to combat the issue. Plus, it looks like Arkansas or Arkansans have to wait a little longer to play sports bets from their phone. The reason behind the latest delay. While the U.S. continues to battle vaccine hesitancy, we're seeing that number drop in several communities. More on the new study coming up. And we're showcasing the talents of two Arkansans making an impact on the people around them. You don't want to miss their stories a little later in the show. Good Wednesday afternoon. I'm Michael Lahren. Meteorologist Nathan Scott over in the Weather Center tracking the potential of some severe weather tomorrow. Nathan, nothing too crazy, but something we need to keep an eye on, right? Michael, good afternoon to you. We've got a cold front that's going to make its way through the state tomorrow. Out there in advance of the cold front, it's warm, it's breezy, and here's the latest from the Storm Prediction Center now, which has increased the chance of severe weather right along the Mississippi River where the orange is. And what I'm expecting is a line of storms could be broken line starts to emerge from western parts of Arkansas moving throughout the state Thursday morning. So our timing here is not the best for severe weather potential, but through the afternoon that line will enter into the orange area and that's why the chance of severe weather is much higher over into Tennessee and Mississippi out there right now. Temperatures are on the warm side into the mid to upper 60s, even 70 where it is more sunshine down into southeast Arkansas, but we'll see a lot of clouds throughout the day and there is a small chance you could see a quick passing shower or sprinkle. Also, the winds kicking in from the south about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts could be as high as 30 miles per hour in some spots. That's going to help us warm up into the upper 60s to lower 70s across the region. I'll have more on the timing of severe weather and what are the main threats with this event coming up? Nathan, thank you. New at noon, it's been two weeks since the city of Little Rock declared a state of emergency due to the recent surge in violent crime. Now Mayor Frank Scott Jr. is outlining his plan to curb it. In a press conference that just wrapped up, the mayor talked about the city's joint efforts. Last night, the city board approved $2 million to address the issues. That money will go to 11 organizations that will focus their time on the young people in Little Rock. Uh, the police department in the city also focusing on several hot spots where these crimes are taking place. And we have more work to do. We're going to keep praying, but we got to keep focusing on proactive policing, but also prevention, intervention and treatment work. And the reason why is because we want to ensure that we save a generation of young people. We'll have much more from today's press conference and hear from one of the organizations the city will use to address this issue coming up tonight on THV 11 News at 5 and 6. A decision on mobile sports betting in Arkansas faces yet another delay. A state legislature subcommittee was expected to vote on mobile sports gaming today, but instead took a recess until tomorrow morning. The chair of that committee said it was to give all members a chance to have any questions they may have answered. Some of those concerns include avoiding any potential legal trouble and determining who's actually in control if this passes. A Saracen Casino executive says while this is a setback, he's confident this will pass soon. I think Arkansans are, are ready to do this, as their neighbors in Tennessee and Louisiana are. And um, as I said to the committee today, I would hope we would move with a sense of urgency. Um, and urgency at this point is tomorrow morning. So uh, I'll be here again tomorrow morning, and um, I believe we'll have a vote shortly after we begin. And you heard him mention it right there. The subcommittee will meet again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We'll have more on today's decision and why this process is taking longer than many would like that's coming up also tonight at five and six lawmakers are back at the Capitol for day three of the fiscal session. Senators are expected to look at several resolutions, including several abortion related proposals. Since this is a fiscal session, every bill that isn't related to the budget needs approval in both the Senate and House before they can be taken up a two third majority. Yesterday, lawmakers voted against allowing the chamber from considering legislation that mirrors Texas heartbeat law. A majority of Arkansas voters support the measure to legalize marijuana use. That's according to a new poll from Talk Business and Politics and Hendricks College. The poll surveyed close to a thousand Arkansas voters. It asked them, what do you think should be the legal status of marijuana in Arkansas? 53% of respondents said it should be legal for adults. 32% said medical only. 10% said marijuana should be illegal and about 4% said they don't know. There are campaigns underway to get a recreational marijuana initiative on the ballot this November.
The U.S. says more than 150,000 Russian soldiers have gathered near Ukraine's borders prepared to attack at any moment now. But Russia is denying that it plans to attack and says those forces have been participating in military exercises which are coming to an end. President Joe Biden is talking with Germany's chancellor later today, just a day after their meeting with President Vladimir Putin. Uh, while diplomacy is still the goal, lawmakers on Capitol Hill and the Biden administration say the threat extends beyond Europe. If an authoritarian leader anywhere in the world is able to invade their neighbor and take them over by force and deny them sovereignty, then this won't end at Ukraine. It'll happen all around the world. Ukraine saw cyber attacks on its defense ministry and two big banks Tuesday. Many analysts say that's exactly what would happen prior to troops moving across the border. Both the U.S. and Ukraine have stopped short of pinning those attacks on Russia, but it remains the number one suspect. The Kremlin denies any link to the cyber attacks. Let's turn our attention to COVID-19 in Arkansas. More than 1,600 new cases of the virus were reported yesterday. We continue to see a decline in our active cases and hospitalizations. More than 14,000 people are still fighting the virus. More than 1,000 of them are in the hospital this afternoon. Unfortunately, another 44 deaths have been added to our total. Despite the growing number of people getting vaccinated, many Americans remain hesitant, especially in certain parts of the U.S. Now, new research shows vaccine hesitancy is dropping much faster among black Americans than white Americans. Laura Podesta explains the findings. Jennifer Saunders was skeptical at first about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. You know, as I'm sure everybody was, because um, I really didn't have a lot of research knowledge about it. So she attended some events in her community to get more information about COVID. It could actually be more deadly to a person with underlying conditions, especially like diabetes, because it could... It could have affected me a totally different way if I were to get it without the vaccine. A new study from Ohio State looks at COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy among Americans. While black Americans were initially more hesitant than white Americans to get vaccinated, hesitance dropped faster among black people. The thing we noticed is that they're more likely to come to believe over time that the vaccine is necessary to protect themselves in their community. And that could be an explanation for why overall black Americans are becoming more willing to use the vaccine. Lead study author Dr. Tessaline Padamsi notes that initial vaccine hesitance among black Americans may have been due in part to historical mistrust of the medical community. The focus should now be on access to vaccines since fewer black people are vaccinated than white people it's probably not hesitant. And that makes us have to look at the other bucket of reasons why people might not be vaccinated. Those problems could have to do with ability to get transported to a vaccine site, knowing where one is near you, uh, being worried that you won't be able to take time off work. Jennifer got her shot in April. Basically, the, the pros outweighed the cons for me at the, end of the, at, the, at the end of the day. She received her booster in November and hopes more people choose to protect themselves. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. The wait continues for parents who want their young kids vaccinated against COVID-19. Pfizer delayed its FDA application to expand its COVID vaccine to kids under five last week. While it means the wait is even longer, it's a decision backed by medical professionals. Dr. Joel Tumlison with the Arkansas Department of Health says Pfizer wanted to wait on the results from their three dose vaccine trial to see if the immunity response is stronger. We're thinking that we probably need a three dose um, regimen uh, at in the end then why go ahead and approve a two dose one now and then come back later and go, oh, no, actually, we need three. That's a little confusing. I mean, it was even a little confusing to me. Tomlinson says vaccine rates for kids 5 to 11 in, in Arkansas is slowly improving. About 15 percent are fully vaccinated. 21 percent are partially. He believes when approved, the rates for kids under five could follow the same trend.